So the original game had a lot of great features, and in the Rise of the Triad reboot, we intend to bring all these features back. The basic level design structure, the weapons, the enemies and the power-ups are basically the same. But we also did some things to improve upon that. The advantage we had was that there were a lot of really interesting elements like, you know, platforming, traps, a lot of things that you didn't see in other first-person shooters at the time. So that's something we wanted to keep in our game. Another thing uh, we focused on as designers was uh, to take a look at the, the original design and see how, how we could improve on the atmosphere of it. Because one thing is the design of the level and of course like how the level flows through. But the other thing is to actually keep the player immersed in some way. And for this, like the original did not have NPCs, uh, but in our game we will actually, like for example in the level I'm working on right now, uh, we will have a prison uh, where you will actually see NPCs behind bars that will not be like enemies. This, this adds to the feeling of immersion for the player, that the place is not empty, there are actually people here that have like been captured or tried the same thing as you have before. You know, in a lot of current uh, first-person shooters, you basically feel like you're just walking straight throughout a tunnel and triggering events while you're following the path. In our game, it's a bit different. We have a lot of secrets in there, which I think will please both old-school gamers and people who like modern shooters, because it's simply a lot of fun. We really reward players for exploring the levels. And, you know, you can search some more for hidden areas, that's something you don't really find that much in modern main games. And, you know, one of the advantages compared to other first-person shooters is that we have all those cool traps and gadgets like, you know, we have jump pads, we have spinning blades which can chop you into pieces, we have spikes coming out from the floor. So, there's a bit of an adventure feeling to it. When we're doing level design, we, uh, we're actually going through four steps. The first three steps are basically uh, layout and documentation, it's the block out of the level and it's the scripting. In the scripting we basically make sure that everything works as intended, doors open as they should, events happen as they should, and everything works properly. And once these three steps have been done properly uh, and tested thoroughly, we go to the fourth step, which is basically a world building or a set dressing where we go in and make the world beautiful. The original was known for having a lot of destructible items in the game. So we're introducing destructible environments as well. So you'll be able to see a lot of debris falling off the walls when you hit them with rocket launchers. You'll be able to see jibs flying all over the place and you'll be able to break almost every object in the game into pieces. One of the aspects of the HUD we worked with is we wanted to inform the players with the different information, how much ammunition, life and so on they have. But we also wanted to create a more immersed uh, experience uh, and we integrated this by making the HUD disappear when there's not action, so it sort of fades away to create more room and more focus on the environment. And I think this uh, gives a great feel, but whenever you shoot the, the gun or something happens, you pick up a coin or anything, it sort of comes back to life so you can get the status and get these informations again. When all the assets are done and they are put into the game, the environment becomes so much more real.